be well Burnett she even ever get that political justice this picture shown here in the first slide is a picture of her one of the famous pictures of her during the progressive era in 1890 Ida B. Wells Burnett was an African-American journalist, a campaign of social and political justice for African-Americans, and a civil rights activist who led an anti-lynching crusade in the United States in 1890. She was born a slave on July 16, 1862, in Holly Springs, Mississippi. She was the oldest daughter of seven children. Her parents were active in the Republican Party during Reconstruction. Her father, James, was involved with the Freeman Aid Society, and he helped start Shaw University, which is now known as Rust College. I'd be well to see her early schooling there. When she was only 14, her parents died of the yellow fever. In 1882, Wells moved with her sisters to Memphis, Tennessee, to live with their aunt after the tragic of her parents. Her brother found work as carpenter princess for a time where Wells continued her education at Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. Ida B. Wells' contributions was on the progressive reform. Progressive era, the progressive era was a widespread of social activism and political reform across the United States. In 1890 to 1920, their main goal was to eliminate corruption in the government. She works to expand history of African American men and women. Ida B. Wells is known for her contributions of raising public awareness about the horrors of lynching, a movement that led to the classification of lynching as a federal crime. Through her creative pamphlets, articles, and speaking engagements, she made lynching a public issue and worked to improve understanding about its nature and motivation. In 1892, she published the Southern Forest Lynch Law, a story in which she gained her national economic competition between blacks and whites. Her time in Chicago helped. The National League of Republican Colored Women of the, Na the National League of Republican Color Women's Club in 1927. This cartoon represents Women to the Rescue, which was pretty, um, which portrayed African American women as a giant and defender of the race. That in her arm, there is a bat, and on the bat it says political rights of federal constitution. The women are now taking over. This is a picture of the anti lynching delegation, which I do well served um, to President Harding on August 14, 1922. Southside Women's Political Lunching in 1929 was a lunching of women that got together to, to stop a lunching, that women, a, a lunching that women got together to stop and advocate for change from the 1920s. This, this cartoon is a camp, it's campaign news from Republican headquarters. It negatively portrays African American women according to the plantation and mistral in the typical of US popular culture in the 1890s. In 1895, Rose met and married Frederick Barnett. They had four children born in 1896, 1897, 1901, and 1904. She also wrote for his newspaper, The Chicago Conservative. National Association of Colored Women's Club, founded in 1896. This was an organization that remained a voice in national affairs and contributed to the uplifting of American way of life. This organization 
objectives included protecting the rights of women and youth, rise the standard and quality of life. Ida B. Wells was a resident of the Chicago home from 1862 to 1931, and her husband, B. Burnett, from 1919 to 1930. It is located in 362024 South, South of London, Virginia, Henry Drive, and Douglas Community Area of Chicago, Illinois. Wells Burnett understood and articulated well before many other African American leaders that lynching was a form of social, political, and economic control. At the end of the century, whites' fears of black progressive that time of social change led not only to black disenfranchisement and segregation, but also a dramatic rise in the public sector. In this, his was involved in the altercation with the white conductor while riding the railroad. She purchased a first class ticket and was seated in the ladies' club and the conductor ordered her to sit in the gym floor section, which is only for the black, which did not offer her first class accommodation. She refused and the conductor tried to remove her. She fastened her teeth on the back of his hand. Mrs. Wells co owned and edited the black newspaper called the Free Speech and Headlights. She wrote about violence against blacks, condemned blacks. Condemning violence against blacks, disenfranchisement, poor schools, and the failure of black people to fight for their rights. When she was fired from the kitchen post for her, and she suggested that blacks for humans that deserve rights. Ivy Wells became leader in anti lynching in 1892 due to a horrifying story of a man named Thomas Moss who was lynched. A along with three other black men. Thomas, the funeral of Ida B. Wells was set for Monday from the Metropolitan Community Church. She passed away April 4th, 1931, after a short illness on the eve of her 63rd birthday. Burnett was perhaps one of the best known social and political justice activists of the 1890s.